Like I had my face in the green carpet of my bedroom for weeks, begging God not to let him leave. And there is some shame in the church still about divorce, yet he let it happen. Welcome to Radical Abundance. I'm your host, Teresa Jansen. Sometimes life is just a freak show, and I know you agree with me. Today's guest is Tess Scott, and she knows all about the freak show of life because she wrote the book about it. Welcome, Tess, to Radical Abundance. Hey, thanks for having me on today. I'm so excited about this. I just love the title of your book, Listen, Sister, Finding Hope in the Freak Show of Life. So, Tess, tell me... Why do you see life as a freak show? What exactly does that mean to you? So my life, I'm a mom of eight boys and one is adopted special needs. So we had a big family and growing up with all these boys in our house, at one time, five were teenagers, like just the milk alone that we went through was an astounding amount. We could have (laughs) had our own cow that would have helped. And life wasn't perfect. You know, there was lots of things happening just in the everyday mothering things, not to mention, you know, the girl things, you know, the hormonal things or the, you know, traffic mishaps or just life. Life is not perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. And when I was younger and I was um, a mom, I met with my friends more in real life or on the phone. And I learned that their life also wasn't perfect. You know, I heard their kids in the background yelling or, you know, we did life together and, and I saw my life is just like their life. It's all a freak show. And I think now women often see their friends on social media and they see that beautiful house on Instagram, you know, the one with the beautiful wreath and the pumpkin on the porch, and it's a perfect house and a perfect life. And women think, wow, everyone else has this perfect life. But that's not true. If you walk into that woman's house, into her living room, there is laundry on her couch, just like your house. Nobody has a perfect life. We all live in this freak show of life. And that's what I want to encourage women. Yeah, for sure. And I know, yeah, you would find laundry on my couch and <laughs> and definitely a little bit of a freak show going on. But we try to clean things up for the external appearances. One of the things, though, I appreciate about the younger generation um, right now is that they are a little bit more comfortable with the freak show and they are more open with that whole thing. Whereas when I was a young mom, when I had kids at home, you had to try to look at least like you had it all together. But Tess, I have to tell Mm -hmm. you, eight boys in the house, that is a freak show, I can just imagine. And uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, you should have invested in that cow because... We, we didn't have, we had six girls and two boys and a gallon of milk a day. In my house, it was the toilet paper though. We went through, I should have bought stock in Charmin. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's right. See, your, your freak show just looks different than mine. Right. But it's still a freak show. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully there's some comfort that can be found in this sisterhood. What has that been like for you in communicating with women and helping people find some comfort, camaraderie, group therapy? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What has it been like for you? I think women want to hear that they're not alone. You know, often if um, I'm speaking, people will say, women will say, yeah, yeah, me too, me too. You know, we all want to know we're not the only one. And that other people maybe went ahead of them, us and they made it through, you know, like, oh, I'm not the only one. You've been through this. And look, you came out at OK and you have most of your hair and everything is going to be OK. That's what they need to hear. We need to encourage the ones coming after us. So before you got to this point, though, of accepting the freak show, embracing the freak show, and then even encouraging other people to um, join in and and find comfort <laughs> in that. How, what did life look like for you? Or were you always just comfortable with your freak show? No, I was <laughs> I wasn't a fan. Um, actually, I will say my in my past, like my past past, I was a black sheep. You know, I've been married four times and I made so many mistakes and so many bad choices. 
But this is the thing. God redeemed that and he's redeeming that time. And I am so thankful. And to think that God would use me to encourage women, it just blows my mind. Now, I, I can't just let that slide. And I hope you're comfortable with this test. But wow, four times. There's mm-hmm. got to be a story there. Yeah, well, there's lots of stories. But the, the first time I got married, I was pregnant at 19. Right. And in the 80s, when you were pregnant, you got married. That's what we did. Right. It was it's what I did, right. I guess. But a lot of people did back then. It was more than norm. Right. If you were pregnant, you got married. So I got married. I was married about a year and um, at 19, then divorced. And then I got married again. I don't know how many years, five years later or something and had some kids with that husband. And then that I was married about 10 years. And then that marriage ended. Then I married Rick, my husband now, and we were married for about 10 years. And I think 10 must be my, my limit or something. I don't know, not really, but um, we were married about 10 years yeah. and I was following the Lord. Like I w- gave my life to him. I'm doing all the things I'm in the Bible study. I got the small group with women. Everything is just, I think going along. Okay. Like marriage isn't perfect because we have two imperfect people in this relationship. So it's not easy but I think it's going along. Okay. And my husband came to me and said, yeah, I don't love you anymore. I'm out. I'm leaving. And man, Teresa, I was devastated. Like I had my face in the green carpet of my bedroom for weeks, just begging God not to let him leave. Like, I don't want to be divorced again. I'm not even a celebrity. Okay. And there is some shame in the church still about divorce, right? And, um, but yet God did, Yeah. yet he let it happen. And we separated after a year, I came to him and said, can we go for counseling? You know, I really want to get back together. He would have none of it. So we got divorced. And then after three years of being divorced, God put our relationship back together. We started kind of hanging around. He asked if we could just be in each other's lives. He wanted to come back. He was a totally different person. And uh, so we worked on things for about a year and got remarried. Like it's an absolute miracle. Absolute miracle. That is a miracle, you know, to be divorced in three years and to remarry, to reconcile and have God restore that relationship Mm -hmm. sounds like quite a journey and um, a point of growth Mm -hmm. for both of you, really. I'm thankful for those years because um, during that time that we were apart, I grew. Like I needed God for each breath. I mean, not even day by day, like sometimes minute by minute. I didn't know what I was going to do. It was just, that was all I had. And so it really is a precious time. Now, don't hear me say I ever want to do it again because I don't, but I'm thankful for that time. And I would not change that. You know, I would not change that. And um, so I so I can be thankful that that happened. So you're talking about some really tough stuff and you're talking about it so normally. All right. Eight boys, Mm -hmm. three marriages, four marriages, three husbands, all of this stuff in the church. Mm -hmm. guilt and shame and all the things that go with all of that. And you're talking about it just like, you know, what you had for lunch. That doesn't come normal and natural to people. How did you get to the point of being able to share your story the way that you are? Yeah. Well, I didn't want to. So I have to be honest here. Uh, After we got back together, we got married on September the 9th. And three weeks later, I was diagnosed with cancer. And so the first year of our marriage was my husband walking through cancer with me and chemo and radiation and losing my hair and like so many hard things. And like, really, God, that's what I said. Like, really? Like, you give me my husband back. I have this, this great, our family's back together. And then this happens, you know? Um, But in the end, like later, not at the time later, I learned that that was actually the best timing because that allowed my husband to show me he loved me. And I had to let him, right? I had to be vulnerable because I couldn't take care of myself. So I had to let him. Also, my kids could see that my husband was there. Like dad is in in this. This is hard and look at what he's doing. 
And so really, if there's ever a good time to have yeah. cancer, which there probably isn't, but um, it was God's timing. It was a good, it was a good timing because, um, you know, all those things happen. Had I got sick and then my husband came and said, you know what? I want to get back together with you. I would have been like, I don't think so. I would not have trusted him. I couldn't have trusted him, but he had no idea. I had no idea. So I'm, I'm thankful for that timing. And as time went on, like, I guess it would be about maybe the next year, I felt really strongly that God wanted me to share my story to encourage other women, but I'm not a writer. I have no formal training. I have no, um, experience writing, but yet it was just relentless in my mind. Like you have to share whatever this looks like. And I didn't know, I thought I was going to talk to women, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, maybe write, I, whatever it is. But again, I said to God, like, I don't think I'm the person for this. I, you know, I'm just me. And who would listen to Tess Scott? Oh my goodness. You heard my track record. But yet he was just relentless in asking me to do this. Well, that is another amazing, amazing story to add into this whole mix. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that book a little bit. Since you have found the courage, you've stepped forward, you're sharing your story on shows like this, but then also you have written it, which is such a very permanent record of something. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the book. How, how did it come to be? Who's it for? And how can they get it? Okay. So, um, what happened, how this, how this actually came to be was as I was arguing with God, um, and I was getting ready for work, my eyes were kind of blurry one day, but as you get older, you know, your prescription changes. And I just kind of thought I'm, I'm getting older, which I am. And then the next day, my, my smile was crooked, you know, but I still went to work because nothing could happen without Tess Scott opening the door. Um, not true <laughs> anyway. And then my speech became garbled. So I ended up in the hospital. They thought I was having a stroke. Um, it was a TIA, which is like a little warning stroke with no permanent damage. So when I came home, I said to my husband, oh, it was just a false alarm. And my husband, wise as he is, said, Tess, maybe this is a real alarm. You need to do what God is asking you to do now. So I quit work. I went back to work and said, I'm, I'm going to quit work in a couple weeks and um, be home and start writing stories. And um, I sent a book proposal to Morgan James and I had a book contract in a couple months and wrote the book and here we are. And it came out in June. So it's June, 2022. It's, it's kind of a crazy whirlwind of, of things that are like, obviously this is God because Tess does not know what she's doing and look at what happened. Right, right. So I'm trying to figure out which audience this book is for, because you've talked about so many different, really incredible things that you have mm -hmm. endured and overcome and seen God glorified through. And uh, maybe it's just for anyone who has that freak show going on in their life. Who, who is it really targeted towards? Yeah. So the book is targeted to women. Women of all ages are loving it. Um, the book is not about specifically, like, it's not my biography of life. It's, it's short little stories, kind of like a chicken soup, sort of like a couple minutes while you're waiting for your kid to be done soccer practice, or you're in the bathroom, but you only have one minute and they're banging at the door, or, you know, you're enjoying a nice afternoon because your kids are all out of the house, um, whatever that is. So, and it's stories of raising eight kids, stories of growing up on a farm, stories of having cancer stories of um my marriage story like and most of them are really funny people say i laughed and laughed and laughed and then the next chapter i cried so i'd like to make women laugh until they pee their pants if i can and then also make them think and each story has um has a you know the real life awkward funny story that really happened and then it has the lesson the lesson that i learned that god taught me through that and then scripture at the end of it. So does it read like a devotional or read more like a virgin stories? Yeah, it reads like it reads like a, de a devotional. But it sounds like it's something that is really great for women because it's small doses and it's real. I can really appreciate that. So thanks for that, keeping it real for us. Yeah. So Tess, tell me if yeah. people want to get in touch with you, what's a great way for them to do that? How, how do you get to Tess Scott? Yeah, so I have a website which is tessscott.com. 
pretty easy to remember if you're looking for Tess Scott, <laughs> tesscott.com. And from that, there, all the links are there for Facebook, Instagram, all, you know, all the social stuff. So you can find me right there. And the book is available at, I guess, all bookstores. Um, we're in Canada, so Chapters, Indigo, and in the United States would be Barnes & Noble, Walmart.com, of course, the Amazons, all that kind of thing. So it looks like it's out there. I heard that it was at the two big bookstores in England, I heard this week. So that's encouraging. That's very encouraging. Wonderful to hear. So and if someone walks in their local bookstore and they don't have it, remember, I love a local bookstore, but remember, do your authors mm -hmm. a favor and just go to the clerk and say, hey, can you order this for me? Because that's just a, a really wonderful thing. So Tess, thanks so much for sharing a little glimpse into your life. But I know that you have something that you want to leave us with. What words of wisdom out of all of these things that Tess has been through and that God has taught you, what, what can you leave us with today? You know what, Teresa, I think the most important thing, and because we're all still in freak shows of life, whatever, they just look different every day. The most important thing that I'm learning is to fill your head with truth. Know what the truth is. And the only thing, the only thing I know in 2022 that I know that I know that I know is true is God's word. So know God's word, fill your head with it. So when you have a thought, you can compare it to truth. Is this true? You know, because sometimes things that aren't true sound true and I need to know what's true. So fill your head with truth. Wonderful. That's a great takeaway. And wow, I'm going to hang on to that one myself for today, for sure. Tess, I'm going to put all the links to the book and, the, and your website, everything in the show notes so people can find you easily. Thank you for being on Radical Abundance, and I wish you a radically abundant day. Thanks so much. <laughs>